You are now in the realm of enlightenment and transformation, as brought to you by the Foundational Friday. Our core aim is to present an experience, an opportunity for your soul to reascend to its place of origin by cultivating a healthier spiritual awareness and emotional maturity. This show serves as a free offering to the greater community and an addendum requirement for all new spiritual training students. For all those listening, if you'd like to move closer to the calculations and fundamental understandings of the new order, be sure to pick up the book, Grasping the Root of Divine Power. If you desire a spiritual reading to help you map your current spiritual position in the face of your world and learn the greatest pathways for your fortune in this season, you can go to the seduhouse.com. That is S A D U L U H O U S E dot com. You can also go to orishareligion.com to find out how you can become a student and member of the new spiritual order that's o-r-i-s-h-a-r-e-l-i-g-i-o-n dot com let us begin greetings one and all greetings here we are again another foundational friday on the enlightenment and transformation network as hosted and parented by the blog talk radio network for now as always, I'm your conductor on this Friday, Yuya Asan Anu, Chief Jegna, a guide, counselor, instructor, and educator of the Anu Spiritual Order and the Sadhuwa House Spiritual Center. We are here bringing spiritual information, soul nutrition for your personal development and growth, not just for you to personally enrich yourself and to aggrandize the ego before you to provide unconditional service to humanity. This show marks an opportunity for us to provide unconditional service to you. Uh, as I've often said on many shows, I do not do this alone. I certainly do not. I do not do these shows alone. I do not provide services alone. But there is a network of loving supporters and students and family who make all of this possible because we are all providing service on some level or another. And uh, I'm appreciative for all of them. I'm appreciative for all of you who call in and listen. And every time I get to do a spiritual consultation with one of you, I always get to hear how the shows and the segments have affected your life. And many of you share some very profound stories with me, which is wonderful. You know, it's wonderful for me, not, not just in terms of confirmation, but it's wonderful to know that people are being touched and more importantly, people are being healed. OK, so I want to just give a, uh, a djembe riff, a drum riff to all those out there who have reached out to me uh, via email, phone call, consultation and let me know that they are growing. They are changing and they're thankful and have shown that measure of gratitude. I am also grateful for you. Uh, with that said, also keep in mind that every third Friday of the month, I will now be doing live uh, question and answers. So for those of you who have sent in emails recently and not received a response, or maybe even not so recently, uh, you will receive a response the third Fridays of the month. And I encourage you to call in on those days. The reason being is several things. One, uh, my schedule has picked up in a way where I can't really accommodate uh all of the email inquiries like I used to. So uh, I have now committed one of my Fridays or one of my show days to just answering questions. OK, um, you can always send your emails in. That's not a problem. You can always call in. I urge you all, as I always say it, sign up for this for the newsletter. Uh, you can get a get a get your email in on the newsletter at the uh, a new nation dot org site. A N U N A T I O N dot org, uh, Sadua House, and even Arisha Religion. And don't worry about spam or us giving your email address out to someone. We don't do any of that type of thing. 
and we don't even email you too often unless it's like a discount coming up or an event that you may be interested in. Aside from that, uh, we pretty much have our hands full with the other I new work than to be uh, sending out constant, you know, updates uh, via the newsletter. At some point, we do want to transform that newsletter into a full all out spiritual e or online magazine. So I would also urge those who are supporters and those who are writers and who are interested in uh, being a part of that that initiative and that project, please reach out to us. You can always uh, send us your questions, comments, and concerns at questions at anunation.org. That's Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N-S at A-N-U-N-A-T-I-O-N dot O-R-G. I would strongly urge for those of you who have spiritual questions or questions about classes or consultations or hosting events or um, if you're uh, interested in being a sponsor for the show or providing some level of support or, or a sponsor for our new services, uh, the events and things that we do, or if you're looking to even advertise uh, on our websites and on our shows and the upcoming events and have a banner at our booths and things like that, you know, you should reach out there. A lot of people have been emailing me uh, personally, especially through the Facebook, uh, my Facebook account which I may soon be shutting down uh, or at least uh, spending in some way. Uh, it's packed with with emails and it's not actually the best way to get to get results. Uh, use the questions at a new nation dot org. Those of you who are my Facebook, uh, quote unquote, friends, you know that I, I don't really post much anyway, you know, so I'm not I'm not one who really gets into social media a whole lot. I only post when I have something going on. Or uh, if I'm posting something that I feel that, you know, is is newsworthy. But uh, for the most part, I'm not on there that often. Most of the time during the day and the evening, I'm working with people. And uh, when I'm working with people, I kind of block myself out of the digital world, you know, unless we're on Skype or something like that, because I have a lot of people I work with internationally. So we utilize the Skype calling. But um, and when that happens, Sometimes I notice the social media pop-ups will come up through, through Skype. But, uh, you know, for a greater and quicker response, make sure you go to questions at ournewnation.org. I can't stress it enough. Uh, for anyone who wants to get involved in the Our New Nation, especially for those students. Um, and I know a lot of you are not on Facebook. A lot of you don't want to be on Facebook. Don't feel any way about it because neither do I. <laughs> so what I'm doing I'm in the process now of, uh, and it's just about done, actually creating a form uh, on the Sedula House page. So it's, it's it's coming along pretty well. And what's really cool about that is that uh, I'll have classes on that page. I decided to offer uh, a few free free classes, uh, extra classes, but not only students, but some will be open to the general. Uh, audience or the general public but the majority of them will be open to registered students and what i'm what i basically did is i designed a few classes that will help carry you through your um your spiritual training so some of the in-between stuff you know uh working with candles working with with you know working with the elements you know uh, a little bit more in-depth uh work on actually building and constructing your shrines even though that is one of the lessons uh but you know so we're going to have more more classes and some of the classes will also be uh, developed and hosted by some of my more advanced students, although all classes will be um, validated, screened and scrutinized by me. So you don't have to worry about um, anything being outside of the realm of what it is that I teach here or elsewhere. All right. So it's very important. You know, soon I'll be sending out links and announcements for you guys to go register on the Sedula House website. You know, especially for the registered students. Um, and we don't want to, you know, especially when you're dealing with these social media sites, it's real important that you not give these outlets too much power. You know, um, the only power that these outlets have is our profiles. It's the energy that we invest in them. And at any point, if they decide to shut you down or do anything or shut down, you lose so much. There's so many whose only social interaction uh, that they have, it, it 
just lives in a realm of social media, which is really sad, especially for those who live like in, you know, way out places where there's not a lot of people around them who are into the same cultural stance that they're into. You know, I understand um, that it is a great outlet for some things, but in other ways, it's a great hinder. You know, it, it causes a great hindrance to the real work that you have to do in touching real elements. Uh, so I'm not really looking to recreate that on the Sudo House website, but certainly looking to provide a more safe place to have conversations about our spirituality and the work that we do and, and our soul work and our communal work, the work that we're doing within the community, because it's all connected. All right. So I definitely want you all to keep an ear out for that. All right. Uh, last Sunday on our new Asafa, we had the esteemed Dr. Lala or Africa come through and share some of his gems of wisdom with us as it pertains to natural remedies, holistic health, uh, melanin, you know, and just food stuff. What is food? What's not food in general? I urge you all, if you haven't checked that out, to go back to the archives and, and take a listen to that show. It was really good. And um, this Sunday, we'll have Dr. Yu, another uh, holistic practitioner and very good friend of mine. Uh, he's family, actually. Uh, and we, we hail um, from the same cultural roots. So it's always a, a blessing. It's always wonderful when um, you have those who are close with you, uh, whether they be blood or whether they not be blood, when they can actually come in and um, present on the same level that you're presenting. You know, it's very interesting how within structures of family or in homes or in residence, you find people who are on the same vibration as it pertains to this type of what we'll call alternative information. Pretty soon we'll also have uh, another family member of mine, Kojo Bay, and he'll be presenting. He's got a wonderful uh, workshop that he does. He's, he's a master drummer and uh, he'll be dealing with, with that science. You know, we started our, our drum technology, but he's a drummer, drummer, <laughs> drummer. <laughs> what we call a, a drum, Jinbei Mao, which is a drum warrior. Okay, so you guys are going to, when Kojo comes, you're going to just love it. You know, if you like what I'm presenting, um, same vibration, all right? Same same kin, same blood, all right? So we come with a very similar energy, similar vibration. Uh, but you'll, you'll enjoy that as far as a new Asafo. This show, you know, we're going to be dealing with the science of Osayin. Osayin, which is really a part two of what we did last month. Uh, which was the first part of Osayan and I dealt with um, a pataki, you know, really what well, it wasn't really a pataki it was more of a, um, a Yoruba mythology, uh, including a japa, the turtle and uh, Osayan, you know, and always remember like the, the turtle, just like the, the spider of, of the Akan, Anansi. These are very spiritual animals and they represent a very spiritual and very interesting vibration. Um, these particular animals. Uh, there's a there's a cartoon series that many of you have probably seen because most people who are into this type of information. They also seem to be into anime and different type of cartoons because you know you can do more with a cartoon. You can reach out, and most cartoons are built on some level of mythology and folklore. But if you guys have checked out the Avatar, the Last Airbender, and you check out the, um, I think it was the concluding episode where he finally gets to fight the fire lord right and you'll see that he received his his jewel his gem of wisdom on how to actually balance his energy with the energies of, of darkness how to balance light and dark from what they call a a, a tiger uh tortoise all right so a tortoise we know is within the the turtle family all right but um it will be in, real interesting to check it out give you some ideas but yeah we were dealing with osayin and ajapa and how Ajapa was coming into the marketplace and stealing and Osayin, who uh, was the was an energy or a tribe. There was a whole tribe of Osayin and they had many different legs and they had certain type of deformities. But they were the ones who were able to or he was the one who was able to catch Osayin. OK, um, now, obviously, you know, when we're dealing with with the legs and the multiple legs, you know, if you picture. If you go back and listen to the archives, if you haven't listened to that episode, what you, what you should be imagining is a tree, blan tree branch or a tree itself. That's basically what the, the image of what was being described to us uh, when we think about Osayin. And I left us with um, a very 
small thing. I didn't really get into it yet, but I had just mentioned that when we're dealing with Osayin, uh, which the name Osayin is related to or relates itself to the energy of the tide. Okay, the tide is like the tide that's in the water, the ocean tide, right? But Osayin reminds us of the power of alchemy. Okay, now of course, throughout the years, uh, we've had various Osayin energies. We've had various Osayin energies, you know, um, one of which, which sticks out, you know, greatly is. George Washington Carver, right? And um, of course, this is relevant because I'm sandwiching this show right in between <laughs> Dr. Africa and Dr. You, who are both uh, master herbalists, you know. Well, I'm calling them master herbalists. Maybe they wouldn't call themselves that, but let's say advanced practitioners of, of herbology and uh, natural medicine and, and healing modalities. But um, so Osayin sandwich is right in between because. When you're getting into the spiritual work and the spiritual walk, you find that the majority of what you do is based around some type of herb work. Okay, especially as a high priest, even the Baba Lao uh, always keeps the Osayin staff nearby because so much is dealing with herbs, but not just the physical herbs, but the herbs represent the culmination. It's kind of like the avatar. Again, when we look at the cards on the avatar, those who are not familiar, just check it out. You could probably even find some episodes online or something or your local library will probably have some a DVD set you probably have to go in the uh, children's section on juvenile that's where the best stuff any is anyway books and videos is always the good stuff is in juvenile because they make sure some people make sure that the children get their programming early on and sometimes the programming is uh, beneficial and sometimes it's a blockage but anyway so uh Avatar, he's basically, he comes to the planet and he has the ability to work with all four elements or the four elements. I don't want to say all four because there's other elements other than just earth, wind, fire and water. Uh, but he has the ability to master earth, wind, fire and water. And through his ability to master these four elements, he comes to bring balance to the world. OK, he comes to bring balance to the world. Now, of course, the truth is that each and every one of us is an avatar and our world is only a, a projection of what we see the world to be in our mind. OK, the world is just a projection of what we're creating right in the moment. Just like as you're listening to me, you're creating your reaction and you're creating the words that are coming out of my mouth while you're listening. Just like I'm doing it while I'm speaking. I don't uh, use any cue cards or anything like that when I do these shows. Uh, the beginning of the month, I meditate on subjects based on the learning track that I'm that I'm giving you guys because there's a method. And um, so, so then I'll say, OK, you know what, because of where we're going and where I'm going, let me speak on this. Let me speak on that. And then after that, let me speak on that, because last month I did this, that, that, that and the next month, you know, so it's it's there's there's some math, there's a mathematics to it. But I don't write notes or anything like that, you know, very seldom I'll write a little something to remind myself and those are usually the shows I know which ones you know I used more notes because they'll have less listens <laughs> the ones where you know I get all the emails and it's you know oh that was wonderful brother thank you so much da, 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 da. those are just a straight freestyle um, but what I'm doing is I'm creating an experience and a reality as I'm going so just like as I'm speaking right now I'm listening right now okay so that's all really your job is as an avatar to create and to respond at the same time. OK, you're creating and then you're responding to your creation at the same exact time. And what you basically find that middle point between all of the elements, which is really that Akashic. OK, that black element. All right. Um, and that's where you're you're able to be creator and observer of creation at the same time. You know, I know hopefully it didn't get too complicated there, but this is all related to Osayin because in within a herb, let's take a dandelion, for example, which is sacred to Shango, just so you know, dandelion. Now, within that dandelion, we have so many different elements, right? Of course, we have wind, you know, because they're, they're out in the wind and they're breathing, you know, because plants are living beings. But we also have sunlight, right? Because the chant that the photosynthesis, the, the plants lock the sunlight in. We have water. It's pretty obvious. You need water for plants to grow. But even if you didn't, the plants have chlorophyll inside of them, which is their blood. All right. And then uh, you have earth. 
obvious one because the plants themselves are the earth. So within one herb or one plant, you actually have an avatar of the entire planet. Right? This is one of the reasons why plants are used so much. Now, does it mean that because the dandelion is sacred to Shango that I cannot give it to Oshun? Because one might say, well, it's yellow. Can I give it to Oshun? You certainly can. It's about alchemy. Okay? Agricultural alchemy. You make things what you need them to do. One of the talents and the gifts and the, the um, practices that a Babalao or any other Ianifa or Awo hones and sharpens is their ability to extract and transmutate the ashe inside of objects. Okay? So they can take a plant and say, you know what? Um, this particular Odu may call for me to use an herb that is not native to the soil that I'm on right now. So what will I do? You know what? I'm going to grab the plant that's closest to me. Boom. And we're going to make this work. And if it works, we get to go. Now, it didn't just work because any plant, any old plant will do. It worked because of your ability to transmutate the properties of that plant and to focus it to what you need to do. Because if a plant or a herb itself is an avatar of all four elements, and all four elements, as we learned in our, our new spiritual training, if you listen to lesson one, lesson one, where I deal with, the, with mastering the elements and we understand that the elements are represented by Yahweh, right? Yahweh. Yeah, I won't get too much into it. If you want to learn more about it, join the class. Today's the last day for special. By the way, many people did jump on it and I'm proud of you guys this time. A lot of times I, I announce the specials and everybody misses them and it comes later, which I'm sure we'll have some of those too. But a lot of people who I've been speaking to over the months or over the days were saying, yeah, I want to join your class, I'm in class. And I told them like, look, in November it's going to be steep discount, get in. Um, a lot of people did take advantage of it. But in any event, uh, when I'm dealing with the science of Yahweh, I'm teaching you that, you know, uh, Yod, He, Vav, He, this represents earth, water, fire. Okay, earth, water, fire, and air. Excuse me, left the last one out. Now, if you understand earth, water, fire, and air and the manipulation of earth, water, fire, and air, then you'll understand that manipulating earth, water, fire, and air manipulates a person's perceptual reality and more important, important represents their authoritative divinity. Their authoritative divinity. Because who is Yahweh? Yahweh is the original name for quote-unquote God, right? But God is nothing but the four elements in that form of Yahweh. Okay. It's nothing but the four elements. So if I can learn how to manipulate the elements, then I can manipulate God. Understand? This is how you're kept on a certain form of lockdown. Because you're, you're led to believe that God is these four elements. <laughs> and God is not the four elements. The four elements are your tools for manifestation, your tools for healing, and your tools for soul ascension. Okay? You are not God's tool. God is your tool. And I know that's that's against what we're taught most of the time. We're taught that we were put on the earth here to worship God and to build God's kingdom and so forth and so on. And, and you, you guys know the rest of that poem. The reality is the structure and the idea of Yahweh was something that we created. OK, because each letter, when even when you're dealing with the Hebraic alphabet, each letter not only represents the deity, but represents a full universe and path that one could go down. Very similar to when you look at the, again, the, the show, the avatar, each element has their own kingdom. So you have the, the um, earth kingdom, the fire kingdom, the air kingdom, and you have the water kingdom, right? And they're supposed to live in a certain balance and harmony within e with each other. So imagine if each one of these kingdoms existed inside of your body, which of course we know that they do, because you have all of these elements inside of your body. Now you ask yourself, are you here to worship your body? Are you here to be a tool for your body? Or is your body a tool for you? Okay, now this is where we understand the concept of, of Yahweh, and it brings us right back to Osayin to Osayin, okay? Through our ability of alchemy or the transmutation of objects, because just real basic, you know, that, I, and I think I've spoken on alchemy before. Alchemy is the, is the um, infusion of the divine darkness, okay, into an object 
to transmutate it into something else, bringing it into the light. We have these stories, or um, the, even from fables, where we hear about one turning lead into gold. And basically what that is, is this. When life hands you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> okay, it's just taking one thing and doing the alchemy on it to trans transmutate it into something else that is useful for you. When you look at the properties of lead, okay, if if, if anyone has ever touched lead or played with lead, you know, I, I used to do a lot of uh, electronics when I was when I was young. I used to really be heavy into electronics and electrocuted myself so many times I can't even count how many times now. My friends still laugh about that to this day, you know. Um, because obviously I was a good conductor of electricity. <laughs> but um, lead itself, lead is something that you use to block certain things. As many of you know, you could just watch um, Superman, right? We'll get into that for a second. We're going to get into the Superman thing. But lead itself is very soft, okay? But it does not corrode. Lead is not a substance that rusts. But it's a very poor conductor of electricity, one of the advantages of using lead for certain things is that lead is very malleable. Okay, lead is very malleable, but it does not rust. Now, rust represents what? Rust represents the oxid oxidizing of something. When something rusts, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We, we think it's a bad thing because it, it doesn't look as good as it did before now that it's rusted. But the truth is, um, rust is growth. That's why even for those of you who have your, your Ogun pots or your Eshu, when you put those those nail spikes in the pot and they get that red rust on them, that's when they're there. That's when they're really doing something. That's when they're ready to rock because that red also represents the, men the menstrual blood. But rust is oxidization. It's growth. Something is changing. Something is transforming. That's excellent. Lead does not do that. Lead does not transform like other metals does or other metals do. Excuse me. Lead does not transform in that way. It does not rust. It doesn't even conduct electricity or defining energy or ashe in the same way that other materials do. Now, what is an excellent conductor of electricity? Copper and gold. Okay? So when one is transmutating lead to go, what it basically means is now they're coming into a place where they're conducting and flowing with the energy of the universe. When they are just led, they're unable to do that. So now let's take it to uh, Superman. I had just mentioned that earlier. Now we know Superman, I mentioned this before, his his birth name is Kael, right? His father is 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 Jurel, right? He's from the planet Krypton, right? Now Kael, Ka, as many of us know in the comedic means spirit or silent or breath and L means God, the definitive aspect of God. Ja represents or, or Jur or Ja represents the higher aspect of God or the father God. And then we have L. Okay, so we basically have the father and the son. Now Superman, very interesting character, very similar to black man. I mean not black man. <laughs> Gave it away. Batman, you you look at him and you say, well if he's supposed to be like this perfect being Especially at the time the Superman was created. You know, we're going back to the 40s. Why isn't his hair blonde? Especially seeing how he gets his power from the sun. You'd think they would give him blonde hair, right? But there's a little hint that they're giving you there. Even with black, with Batman. I almost said it again. <laughs> He's got the black hair. He's always got to have the black hair. So now, even Wonder Woman, by the way. But let's, let's move on. So... His his weakness is what? Kryptonite. Right? His weakness is kryptonite. Kryptonite kryptonite is that green substance. Why? Because kryptonite represents the heart chakra. And the heart chakra is the chakra for truth. It's that green truth. Now, Superman lives his entire life as a lie. I'm Clark Kent. I'm Superman. And what he's saying is, if you look at Clark Kent, he's a bumbling, like, nerd. He's always tripping and he's just doofy. Because that is the God's perception of humanity you guys are a mess <laughs> look at you you doofy you gotta wear glasses you want to mess around with you know dried up looking Lois lane you know there's nothing good about you you see but when that kryptonite comes clark clint clark kent is susceptible to kryptonite and so is superman because keep in mind that even though he's clark kent he always has his superman under rules underneath his clothes he never takes them off Right. So underneath it all, he's still 
Kael, or the, the divine God of breath, or the divine spirit of God. He's still Kael underneath Clark Kent. All right, so now that green represents now or or that that truth coming to him lead is what they use if you ever read the comics or look at the movies they can encase kryptonite in lead and it won't affect him okay truth does not get through the lead so this is very similar and i know this is very um appropriate for this time uh because we have just passed the the season or the day i, I don't know if it was today or yesterday i'm not good with dates but of what they call Thanksgiving here sometimes at the Thanksgiving festival, right? Or some might call the ungrateful taking festival. But in any event, it's a time period for a lot of people who are dealing with a certain level of conscious communication of awkwardness. It's a time of awkwardness because some of you are around your family members or you're not around your family members and you have to explain to them uh, why you don't want to eat or why you're not going to arrive or maybe you did arrive but you feel uncomfortable or maybe you're being laughed at because it's yeah you conscious and all that but look you, you, <laughs> you tearing up that stuffing and that salad and that macaroni or you don't want no you don't want no meat huh but I bet you eat them candy yams and that macaroni you're starchitarian you know so this is a time now for a lot of awkwardness for people all right that's that that kryptonite and some of you try to convince you try to speak to your family members and to no avail. And the reason is because it's like you're speaking, you're trying to put electricity through lead. It's not going to help. The alchemy has to occur. Now, what is the alchemy? Al just is the same uh, prefix or suffix as L. Whenever you see Al, L, Er, or Or, it's the same word. It means the divinity, the definitive article. Okay. So Al chemistry or Al chem, chem, it comes from Kemet. It means black. So the divinity of blackness is alchemy. Now, what is the divinity of blackness? The divinity of blackness represents that melanin, which takes over everything. So when that melanated George Washington Carver, when he touches that plant or that peanut, he says, you know what? You're going to be shaving cream. <laughs> you're going to be a food substance. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. You're going to be that. You're going to be that. You're going to be so many different things, peanut, because I've now touched you and made a new negotiation and, 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 and pact. Through my my energy of Yahweh, through my God, I master the four elements. And within that peanut exists every single element. And if George Washington Carver recognizes that I am the creator of, of Yahweh, then that means I am the creator of the purpose of this herb. Osayin. Okay? Osayin assigns the purpose of every herb. Osayin distributes each herb to each Orisha. There's a story about that when, you know... um, at one point, you know, uh, Oya had schemed on, you know, she wanted, and remember, Oya's Odu was Osa. Osayin, Osa. It's spelled the same way. O OSA, OSA. So she wanted Osayin's powers of herbology. So she came up with this plan where um, she, you know, because he would keep his gourd. He had all the powers of herbs and the secrets inside of this gourd. He used to keep, gourd he used to keep on a high treetop and no one could get to it. So what she did was she made a strong wind blow and it knocked the gourd over. The secret spread all over everywhere and all of the Orisha came and grabbed various secrets. This is how various herbs became sacred to different Orisha. Okay, that's in that particular mythology, in that story. But more importantly, when we're dealing with Osayin, we're dealing with the process of transmutation to the various Orisha consciousness through the use of herbs. So if we want to affect something on the earth plane, Right. The earth plane dealing with the five senses. And what is the five senses perceiving? The five senses is perceiving Yahweh, water, air, earth, fire. That's what the five senses perceive. Anything beyond that, when you're dealing with it, intuition and whatnot, you're dealing with your, with the Akashic element, which is perceived by your spirit or your Ori. OK. Or your Ka. Right. But here on the planet, we're dealing with the Yahweh energy, the five elements. Right. And. Once you understand that the five elements can be manipulated, this is the one of the reasons why your family still wants to do Thanksgiving, though you've given them, you showed them every documentary you could show them, you broke things down to them, they're still going to do it because they're manipulated by Yahweh. They're manipulated by what they taste. They're manipulated by what they hear. They're manipulated by what they smell. They're manipulated by what they see and they're manipulated by what they touch. And if the dominant or the more parasitical elite or the parasitic society 
can manipulate those five elements, they can manipulate the minds of the people. We're going to take a quick break and I'll be back on more with the energy of Osayin. A new nation and Udemy would like to offer an amazing one-time opportunity. From now until November 29th at 1159 Pacific Standard Time, a new spiritual training, Phase 1, will be discounted up to 75% by using the discount code BLACKFRIDAY13. That is the words Black and Friday and the number 13. A new spiritual training, Phase 1, has been called life-changing, evolutionary, and necessary. So sign up now for a new spiritual training, Phase 1, at www.udemy.com forward slash a new dash priesthood one forward slash and enter the coupon code Black Friday 13. The discount drops every day, so act now and don't wait. Create your own miracles today by signing up for a new spiritual training phase one at www.udemy.com forward slash a new dash priesthood one forward slash. That is www.udemy.com forward slash a n u dash p r i e s t h o o d one forward slash and entering the code black friday 13 and now back to our segment all right okay so you got the last announcement for the black friday sale which of course ends at midnight tonight so for those of you who have not gotten on get on <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say about that but anyway, let's get back to our, our lesson. Now we got the the uh, infomercial over with. And you're going to probably be getting more of those um, those little immerse, uh, commercials and spots because um, one of the things that I haven't really done and I failed to do over, you know, the shows and over the um, uh, two, three year history uh, of this show is that I, I usually don't advertise much of what we're doing or what we have going on. Um, and I just got into doing that recently. Uh, I should have been doing it from, from the start, but, um, when I'm doing this, these segments, I'm really just focused on bringing the information to you. And, um, luckily I have concerned family and students who make sure that certain elements are put in so that the order is taken care of. Okay. In traditional senses, you know, yeah, one wouldn't be you know, the, the town janitor and at the same time, the town shaman, the shamans were taken care of. They were given proper tribute. And I know that's not a standard thing in our society today. And that's very clear by the state of, uh, quote unquote, retirement and demise that so many of our elders leave out of here at, you know, many leave out impoverished. Those who have taught us some of our greatest lessons, you know, our historians and our cultural educators and our our spiritual uh, informants, they, they, they just usually leave out of here in a, in a very um, decrepit state. And it really shows the condition of the quote unquote community, whether you want to blame it on what's called the conscious community or whether you want to blame it on the community uh, of their ethnic origins. It clearly is an issue. And I, for one, learn from the actions, behaviors and activities and even mistakes of my elders. Uh, I enjoy the soft lessons. I don't have to go through what they went through uh, in order to understand everything. Some things I will go through, but other things I can learn from just observing and, and experimenting mentally through what we call temptation, just exploring the thought of temptation. What if I did it this way? Oh, okay, I don't think it'll work out. So, yeah, it's always important to maintain the business. <laughs> it's always important to maintain the business. And that's why it's even critical for you guys to when you have your questions or concerns, reach out to questions at anewnation.org. Um, every moment that you attempt to uh, send me these really uh, elaborate questions, especially when they're, they're like back to back, I answer them. Okay, what about this? What about that? What about that? What about that? 
you actually take away time and energy from the other things that I need to present to the community. And uh, sometimes I have to be distant. And I'm I'm actually saying this for though all of you perspective I was. You have to understand. You have to sometimes main, maintain a distance with the people in order to serve the people, because um, you got to understand and recognize the spirit of the community that you're in. And not everyone is going to uplift you. Not everyone is going to support you. Some people are just going to have you volunteer yourself to death. They will have you volunteer yourself to death. And they will not return or reciprocate any of the things that you're giving to them. Or if they do, it will be on a very small level. So one of the things that you have to make sure you do, family, is self-preserve. But also make sure that your needs are taken care of first. Before you start going out and trying to save the world. Which is not going to happen because the world really doesn't need saving. Um, so it's important. you know. So you will see some of those spots because... Um, it's critical to keep things going. You know, everything that's presented to you comes at a cost, you know, uh, monetarily. Uh, but even my time and my energy units, and those are measurable in units, <laughs> my energy I can measure. So um, we have to support our scholars. We have to support our owls. We have to support our Bible owls. And everybody wants everything for free. And everyone gets offended when you say there's a there's a rate or there's a donation suggested for something. That, that's like an offensive thing to say to someone. Um, in the era of free information but i'll just let you know that in america there's nothing free except for cheese and that's the cheese that's in the mouse trap so you know especially those of you who have all these free email accounts and these free youtube channels you know and you're on the screen every five minutes just know that um your face is being cataloged from every possible angle and now you can be placed at any possible place in the world because we have your voice, we have your face, we have your mannerisms, we have your likes, we have your dislikes. We have your entire avatar on digital record. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to tie it back into Osayan. <laughs> so again, you know, we're talking about the energy and the power of the avatars that we send to do things. And some people can steal your avatar and send it to do something that you didn't do. They can place you somewhere that you were never at. We saw this activity with a lot of people in the past when we look at the COINTELPRO program. And so many people were, you know, this information came out later. So many people were indicted, you know, and convicted for crimes in places that they never were even at. You know, and that was without this technology. So imagine what can be done now. Even now as I'm speaking, and this goes out amongst the digital public airwaves, my voice is cataloged, my inflections, my accent so forth and so on. So what must I do in order to save myself from that? Well, the first thing I must do is alchemy. Transmutate my biomolecular structure. Be something in someone else. You know who's a great example of that? Any of you who listen to hip hop or let's say old school hip hop, check out Method Man. Something I always noticed about him, you know, from back in the 90s. He used to always kind of amuse me a little bit. He would morph so much, you know, like, for instance, like, you know, I remember when I, you know, years ago, like all a lot of the, the young ladies liked him because he represented that Staten Island gruff. He was kind of like a ragamuffin, what we call it. You know, he had that rugged appeal. And now I'm hearing a lot of women talk about how handsome he is, you know, um, but he's someone if you look at him, if you look at him over the years, he looks different every single year. <laughs> you know, he looks like an entire family and it's a spiritual science to who the Wu-Tang Clan is and who Method Man is and he represents the energy of water, Appa, just so you know and water is that he's that feminine um, mutate, that's why when you look at the, the clan, he was the one who branched out the most and did the most, you know the, the most d d diverse things, you know, and even in terms of music, he did rock music you know, he did R&B, of course he did hip hop you know, he did duets, he, he did acting, and, you know, he, he went all over the place with what he did um, because he represented that that water energy, but that ability to transmutate and to, and to perform alchemy. The method, man. I have many methods. Like he said, I got many methods to how I do my ish. Roll it up, you know, smoke it up, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, he's talking about the different methods and how he does things. Alchemy. Okay? So... When we're dealing with the energy of Osayan, how can we tap into it? That's what, you know, I always like to give you something practical. Very simple thing. Many of you know that we, uh, in the Yoruba tradition, we utilize what's called Orisha pots, right? 
But what else do you put in, in pots? Plants. Real simple, isn't it? You can grow plants with a certain purpose. So let's say if you have a some sunflower seeds. We'll go back to the, the sunflower, right? Uh, which is sacred to Oshun and Shango, by the way. Sunflower. So you can do your Aduras, your Arikis over those seeds. You can even bathe with the seeds. And you charge them with what you need them to do and need them to be. And then you plant it. And then when you're pouring the water or you're giving it water, you're giving it water that has had libation said over it. So as that plant grows, your desire or your situation or the healing that you need will grow along with it. It will grow along with it as the plant grows. Okay, that's a form of an Arisha pot. Believe it or not. Now, am I saying that there are plants inside of Arisha pot, pots? No, I'm not saying that. And of course, I can't tell you what's inside of an Arisha pot because it's not for the uninitiated to know. What I am, I'm giving you a method of somewhat of the principle of it, which you can do on your own in a very safe manner. You can take a plant, let's say if you take peppermint. Okay, uh, or spearmint. These are oyas and these are shango's herbs. You can even take aloe, which is sacred to Oshun. You could take poke, poke, poke weed, the poke bush, which you could find a lot of times outside, or even mugwort. Poke is, is sacred to Ogun. And you can grow these things. You take the seeds and you speak over those seeds. Some people like to use the word prayer, but you know, I don't really deal with the prayer um, thing. But if you want to say prayer, you can pray over them. All right. And then you charge them for what you want them to do and what you need them to do. And as the plant grows or does not grow, it will inform you. It's a form of divination of what's actually happening with that desire. Why? Because in that moment, you become Yahweh. Just like in Apollo, we have the Nganga. And the Nganga is a universe unto itself. It is its own self-contained universe. Well, if the five-dimensional reality addresses uh, earth, fire, water, and air, then why can you not create that same reality inside of a plant pot okay now because we notice an ele other element is the akashic element right it's that spiritual black ether well who represents the spiritual black ether that's the prayers and the aduras that you put into it just like us our bodies are made of those four elements and metal but we'll just say the four for now but what animates the body what animates the soul it's ether the akashic that's why Nas said, and um, and when he was going against Jay Z, he said ether, the thing that'll make your soul, the stuff that makes your soul burn slow, ether. Okay, he knew what he was saying. He knew what he was saying when he said it. That's why the song was such a hit. Okay, that's why he was able to. It even became a phrase. Oh, he ethered you. <laughs> you know, it became so popular. Okay, but ether represents that akashic element and through that akashic element of ether we can remove the illusions of lead and we can transmutate the lead into the new reality of the gold through ether ether is what your breath it is that black element okay going back to kael it is that black element that melanin that dark element that earth element that osayin is the ether aspect that animates and transmutates objects on the planet. So it's the same thing that happens with your plants. Now, why are some plants sacred to certain Arisha? Because some plants already have a propensity and inclination towards certain activity. Just like if you wanted to use alchemy and transform a tank into a battle machine, it would be much easier to do that than to take somebody's scooter and transform that into a battle machine because a tank already has an inclination towards that direction but does that mean that you cannot perform a hit or an assassin cannot use a scooter to wage war against somebody it, it, assassin certainly can they use anything they use that's the ninja right because a ninja what lives in the darkness the blackness and if anybody has ever studied ninjutsu when you study ninjutsu the first thing they do is they tell you is when you enter into a room find 11 objects in the room that you can use as weapons that's a form of alchemy i studied ninjutsu for a little while Okay, so as soon as you come in the room, you're looking, okay, I see a rolled up uh, magazine. That's a weapon. I see a, somebody left their keys on the counter. Well, look at all those keys on the chain. Wow, if I hit somebody across the forehead with that, that's a weapon. I see a pen. I see a letter opener. So forth and so on. I see an umbrella. These are all different different weapons, a stapler. 
That's a form of alchemy. Okay. And dealing with that dark, what is, what a ninja? Ninja wears all black. Unless we're talking about G.I. Joe, but the ninja wears all black, works in darkness. It's that dark Akashic element where I'm going to make it be what I desire it to be because I am the controller of Yahweh. Yahweh is only dealing with the four elements, but something is missing. The fifth Akashic element. And it's that Akashic element that programs Yahweh to get the work done. All right. So when you're eating food, as the Moors taught those when they travel through certain regions, they never taught them to give thanks for your food. That's something we do. We thank we thank uh, the Supreme for the food. They told them to charge the food. That's Osayin. So you tell your string beings, listen, these string beings right here, what you represent is that promotion. Okay? That's the alchemy. And obviously there are certain Aduras or Arikis or prayers or mantras or chants that you can use to perform these actions, which we're not going to get into in this show. But just by your intention, you can do it. Now, there are certain ways to do it simpler, and that's where we get into the spiritual training and the spiritual aspects. If you want to learn those things, we'll be getting into that more in phase three of the Anu spiritual training, where you'll be working with other people and things like that. But in any event, what we're talking about here, and when we're dealing with the science of Osayin, we're dealing with the science of alchemy. As I got into the last show, Osayin is that rooster, that metal staff that many of you see. Some people call it Osun. You know, they, they mix it up, but they re really it's Osayin. OK, so they'll call the staff the Osun staff, but it's an aspect of, of Osayin. So they don't know if they're talking about Osun or Oshun. All right. And there are several different staffs. But one of the aspects is the Osayin staff, because herbology and a reminder of alchemy lies at the root of every single spiritual practice around the world. Everyone is trying to turn lead into gold. OK, everyone is trying to turn uh, what they have into a glorified body or make their feet like burning brass and their hair like wool and their eyes red like coals. OK, but this sounds like well, I don't want to get it. There. <laughs> but in any event, that's the transmutation of a glorified body. So even when you're eating food by your ability to charge the food that you're eating, you glorify your body. You remove it from the mundaneness of a lead body. Uh, you remove it from the mundaneness of a lead body and you make it more conducive to electricity or electromagnetic energy, just like our ancient Negara and Negaru did, which is the original name for the pharaohs. Pharaoh, you know, it, it, some say it's a Greek word. It's actually an African word, too. But going back before it was the Negara and Negaru. Nega, yes. So now what they did was they ate gold flecks. They ate gold in their meals, gold powder. Why would they eat gold powder? And why would they cover their bodies in gold dust? Because they knew that this was a science to make their bodies more conducive to messages and the energies of the universe. This is also one of the reasons why they wore less clothing. We packed the clothing on and we blocked the energy from the elements. We blocked the messages that are being sent to us because we were taught to wear all these different clothes because we were taught that our nudity is indecent. Right? So... Even if it was indecent or not indecent, there always has to be a moment where you receive messages in. How can you make your body more conducive? Well, a lot of the foods that you eat in society, they're acidic. They make your body more metallic and more conducive to certain waves, certain sound waves, but not the ones that are conducive, when you're, not electricity, but sound waves. So like the deodorant that you like to use that has aluminum in it. Right. That makes your body more metallic, makes it more acidic. So now and you guys should check out the movie Kung Fu Hustle and check out um, Scott Pilgrim's movie I saw recently. And it was dealing with the sound wave. Even. Oh, another good one. Josie and the Pussycats. Excellent movie. I know it sounds like oh, a silly movie. Check it out. It's always the silly movies where they sneak the messages in because they know those are the ones that the children watch. And you'll see the, the understanding, those three movies of how sound waves are used to manipulate your psycho spiritual state sound waves. Well, isn't this a form? Isn't this a component of Yahweh? Right. Yahweh, the God, the God of Jacob, Yahweh. OK, uh, the God of Moses, which that was really Jehovah, Yofa or Oya. We've gone through that one before. But anyway, so it's that energy. 
of transmutation and alchemy that's used to control things. So you can use that right in a your own potted plant. And you can put certain seeds that are sacred to certain Arisha, or you can just find acorns or seeds that are in nature and you charge them. You hold them in your hand and you speak to them. And every time you're pouring your adura, okay, or you might even want to burn incense near them, or you 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 expose them to the sunlight, the real sun, which is what? Your first eye, Ori Iwaju. You're charging that plant. Now, remember, that plant also has blood. So you can even do an ebo with that plant. What would the ebo be doing? What, what would that be? Juicing the plant. Hmm? Right? Because if chlorophyll is a plant's blood, just like plasma is an animal's blood, and we use plasma to give the Arisha a vehicle to travel, well, why couldn't you use an aloe plant? Why couldn't you bleed an aloe plant out? Why couldn't you bleed a grapevine out? Huh? Why couldn't you bleed out uh, some kale? Why couldn't you bleed out wheatgrass and remove the chlorophyll from it? Isn't that a form of blood? Okay. See, everything doesn't have to be done with animal blood. There's a higher way. And it's a higher way even beyond using plants and animals. We'll get into it at some point. But in any event, that is our show for this Friday. I am your host, Yuya Asan Anu, Chief Jegna of the Anu Spiritual Order. Uh, today's last day to sign up for classes at the discounted rate, but the classes are cheap anyway, so you can get in at any time, but you know, save yourself a little bit of money. And, um, again, for those who are interested in consultations or anything like that, you know, contact me through my contact form on any of the sites. But if you have your spiritual questions and, and questions about the order, uh, it's best to send those to questions at our new nation dot org questions at a new nation dot org especially with those of you who are interested in hosting a meetup where i'll come and work with you personally or people in, in your in your area um send it to that and my staff will get to it all right and uh you get a quick response it's much quicker than sending everything to me personally all right but in the event you guys enjoy your time enjoy your energy and enjoy the transmutation of your energy as you see as it should be that's why we say I be. I be over here, I be over there, and I'm Chief Yuya Asana Nu. I be out. We thank you for your listening support and urge you to become an active participating member of the A New Order. Please be sure to follow our Ustream broadcast, which can be found at ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash enlightenment hyphen and hyphen transformation that is u s t r e a m dot t v forward slash channel forward slash e n l i g h t e n M E N T hyphen A N D hyphen T R A N S F O R N A T I O N. Also, please be sure to sign up for the A New Newsletter, which can be found by going to a new nation.org. That is A N U. N-A-T-I-O-N dot org. If you'd like to become a sponsor or an on-air guest on this or any of our other broadcasts, please be sure to contact us at questions at a new nation dot org. That is the word questions at a new nation dot org. Thank you for your continued support and be well.